Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm holding this device in my hands. You may, those of you who may remember what this was, I made a video a while ago, a long time ago actually, about this little thing. This is a cooling device, a cooling system or a cooling device. It's basically uh, a fan. And well, there is a few things to, to this. this. This one specifically is a Ulanzi brand. And this is the original cooler that they produced. Uh, if you have not watched that video from a long time ago, I will, I guess, recap a few things real quick. This is the original design and it uh, uses these little suction caps on the back. And in that video, I was talking about those uh, things not being able to actually hold onto, um, onto a camera. The bottom line is that these things don't really work that well, especially on what, what was it? Was it a Canon? A Canon camera that I had in the past. And this was actually the intention of, uh, intention of the use for this device. Uh, that camera used to, uh, it overheated basically. In any case, there is a, well, there isn't much to it. The original design, there is a type C port here. There is a button turn uh, that turns this thing on and off. And there is a small display. It actually reads temperature. There is a sensor on the backside and this reads the temperature. So you can actually, well, you can see what the temperature of your device that this is attached to is, is going to be. There is a battery level indicator. Well, there's a small display that has a couple of, uh, well, gives you a, some sort of a useful information, I guess. And in essence, this is just a fan that blows air. Not that this camera needs any of cooling system or devices. This is not the proper camera to demonstrate anything like this on because this is an FX and it's got an active cooling built into it, like um, similar to if you have a Lumix S5 II that also has a cooling uh, built into it, active cooling. I, Yes, I should say many cameras don't have that. Most cameras don't have that, uh, like mid range, lower price range cameras don't have any cooling and they occasionally overheat, especially if they are black in color and you're outside uh, with the sun shining onto it and uh, summer weather, I guess that's the combination that makes and you're doing 4K. That's usually the ticket for overheating. So this is the original device version one, I guess. And uh, since then, Ulanzi upgraded the design and nowadays it's a little bit different. It's got a sort of a clamp system. So the other thing about this device is it's just basically a fan that blows air onto your camera. So the, basically anything that you can stick onto, onto the back of, uh, of your camera is going to replicate what this device does. Of course, you have to provide power and such. Uh, this is all included device. It's got a battery inside. That's one key point that uh, I should mention. And you basically just turn it on and the fan starts to spin. It's got two speeds and that, that's pretty much all that this thing does. And it's supposed to keep your camera sort of cooled down or cool and functional, I guess. And finally, in today's video, we'll look at something at something different, well, similar, but different. Naturally, I should have just gotten a version two of this cooler, but for some reason, I decided to go with something else and try something else, I guess. And a couple of people actually mentioned in the comments that uh, they use something else, something different. This is a different device. This is a small rig version of this, I guess, or a similar contraption. Uh, a couple of things to make a note of from the start. This is a Sony specific device. So I guess, yeah, they have two different versions or two different types of cooling systems. This one specifically is meant to be used with Sony cameras. So I guess the size of the back side where the device is installed is, is a shape and size and all that actually this, this thing is supposed to fit in perfectly. I already opened it, but just for those of you who is thinking about or planning on buying this, this is what it's like, a small box. It's a small rig, naturally, there is a name, there is a port number here and it says cooling system for Sony cameras. There is some information on the backside, made in China, of course. So what's inside of the box is uh, not much, I guess, but uh, there's a type C cable that it, they provide. It's uh, it's not a long cable, but it's not, it's not 
one meter but a little bit shorter but it is a type c on both ends and the device itself is uh is wrapped in a like a protective paper like this fairly fairly nice there is some instruction we don't care about any of that let's put that box aside the device itself is something like this and this is a different type of a device so this device differs from this ulanz version in a couple of ways by the way i actually made this work by just uh, i tried to use a double-sided tape uh, well i tried i could have just pulled all these or shouldn't have doesn't matter what actually works if you want to still if you don't want to spend money and you want to keep using this you can actually just wrap a couple of uh, rubber bands i guess around your camera and that will keep this in place that and it will, it will it will make it work today we're looking at this device and it's it's basically a fan also uh, but it, it's designed differently so the first thing that we should pay attention to is that th this is installed in a different way compared to Ulanzi version this thing has a tab on the left side and a couple of pads rubber pads on this side and this is a sony specific device sony cameras have a recess on behind the screen's hinge so the way you install this you basically slide this tab into and it's a spring loaded tab like i said did i say that so this tab slides into that recess and you push it into uh into to the left i guess and uh and there you go this this thing is in place it's it's not i don't think it's going to go anywhere but at this point everything is up to these rubber pads of course the bottom one i guess do i have a chance no you cannot really move it up and down much you basically just center the tab with the recess and that that locates the cooling system and one thing to make a note of that this lower lower rubber pad is not utilizing a hundred percent of its surface because of this recess again where the screen uh, i guess that's the the finger recess to open the screen and close the screen so it doesn't have to be here really but nevertheless sony made it this way so that's how this thing is installed it's not going to go anywhere i don't dare to lift my camera by well maybe in this way but it's going to stay yeah it's not going to go anywhere so in that respect this device mounts to the camera really nicely uh, there are two rubber pads on the back side on the tab side too so there are two other things or maybe three other things we are going to look at the design of this well first of all i should mention that this doesn't have a built-in battery uh, it's got a usb port here it's got a button here there's a small hole which is actually uh, an led indicator and that's pretty much it unlike this there is no built-in battery and there is no display and no battery <laughs> again so that's one thing so basically what that means that you have to have a battery bank or something else that provides i guess five volts and you have to and it will run on a constant on a battery power basically that's what it is so if you try to turn it on it will not because there's no battery inside of it so you have to plug in power and the indicator will light up red so at this point you push the button for a couple of seconds and it turns green the LED indicator turns green that speed one it's got two speeds or two settings for RPMs and speed number two is going to be indicated by this indicator turning the LED turning blue I don't know if you can hear this or not but it's uh, it becomes a little bit loud speed number one lower speed I guess low speed it's still a bit loud but uh, you can hear it speed two is much more rpms if you pull the plug it just turns off if you replug the power it does not going it's not going to it does not turn on it's not going to turn on again so you have to utilize this use the button again hold it for a few seconds and the device turns on so that's basically how this works uh, good or bad i guess in a sense that uh, 
it's a good thing and a bad thing, I guess, at the same time. As we can see, there isn't much real room in this inside of this inside of this space really for a larger battery so this will not run for a prolonged time on the battery itself so it will give you maybe I never tested actually how long it's going to run I guess someone knows or there's some data out there Google knows everything I guess the the downside to using an internal battery that you cannot replace is that it will eventually go bad and will degrade and you may eventually if you use this and discharge the battery, cycle the battery too many times, you will end up just uh, running off the in, of, of an internal battery anyway. So in that sense, and also having a lithium polymer whatever battery inside of a, it's always a risk. It, it can go bad, it can leak or whatever. It's this thing may get hot and such. So this device doesn't have any of those uh, things and problems associated with the internal battery, I guess. Uh, but I guess again you have to have a power that you have to provide from something else you can use uh, anything uh, and if you're running a camera for for an extended period of time you would have you would have something on the camera anyway in most cases if you're not just walking around and, and such using the internal battery uh, there is a major difference design difference between this and this and this is really major because whereas this is just basically a fan that blows air onto your on the back side of your camera it basically blows air onto the camera and so this is an intake and the back side is the exhaust and as you can see you have to rely on the gaps around around the cooler itself for the air to come out the air circulation may be a concern because the air has to exhaust and as far as I can see it may actually be deflected back and recirculate into the fan so all those are good questions but that's how this works on the other hand this device is totally different in the design it's basically a heat sink as you can see that is uh, the back side of it is a heat sink and there is a conductive heat conductive pad that is covered by a protective film at this point so if I remove it it's just uh, it's something it's not sticky but uh, you better keep it clean I guess that's one thing about it I'm going to peel it off when I install it on my camera that this is going to go on to for real and uh, like I said it's a heat sink and what happens here and you can see there is a fins on this there are fins on this side and so I guess the fins are actually going sideways, I guess. And they also have cutouts across perpendicular to main direction of the fins. And what this means, what that means is that you have a really good, you have to have a good contact between the back side of this and the camera itself. Uh, this is fairly, it's a flat surface. It's a bit rough, but it's flat. So you have to provide a good co contact between the back side, the pad, the heat conductive pad of of the back side of the heat sink and the camera, and uh, and the exhaust is actually the side. So I like the design in the sense that once you attach this to your camera, it will actually exhaust the air up to the side, to the bottom, and to the left. As you can see, the air is going to freely exhaust from the heat sink. And it's not going to be blocked by anything so these gaps on the camera itself were the screen uh, that recess the pocket I guess that's the proper word the pocket for for the screen is not going to matter for this device because it's just going to exhaust the air out and it's not going to the exhaust the exhausted air is not going to be blocked by uh, any camera features so I guess that's a good thing about it uh, the bad thing is um, I'm not sure how this pad is going to really work or how long it's going to last. So of course you have to keep it clean. It's not any sticky. So I guess it's in a sense reusable or you may be able to keep it clean. Yeah, it's not sticky at all. But like I said, it's probably a good idea not to touch it much with uh, anything oily. And I guess this will rely on the heat transfer. 
Uh, you can circulate air as much as you can through the heat sink and all, but if there is no good contact between the pad, the heat conductive pad and the backside of the camera, it's not going to evacuate the heat from the camera. So one thing that I noticed, I guess, when I run this, when you turn it on, and when the fan is not running, the pad is fairly at a room temperature, I guess. Once you turn the fan on, this backside gets, becomes cooler and actually it becomes cold. Oh yeah, it, it becomes really cold to the touch. So maybe it's a vapor chamber or something that they have here uh, built into it, but uh, it gets really, really chilly. But again, like I said, you really have to uh, be relying in this case, this device is going to be relying on the heat transfer from the camera to the pad. Well, through the pad to the heat sink, through the pad to the heat sink. So I guess that's pretty much all about it. Uh, as far as uh, construction, I think it's uh, somewhat plastic and aluminum, the heat sink itself, I guess it's aluminum. It has to be aluminum or some kind of a, an aluminum alloy. Uh, the outside, uh, that seems to be like plastic. All of this is plastic. The bottom is plastic naturally. So otherwise it's a fairly solidly built thing. I, I really don't have any complaints about uh, Constru construction of it. Uh, this one on the other hand is a al aluminum alloy and it's anodized or something and I already managed to scratch it here. So I guess that's pretty much it for, for this dis device review I guess. Yeah, that's what it's like. Kind of like it. But I guess again, it keeps uh, bugging me that uh, I don't... I'm really curious to see how this will work because it, it's going to be heat transfer between the camera and the heat sink and that's usually uh, something that you have, have to be worried about in any situations. And like I said, this is a Sony specific. Will it fit anything else? I can try on a... So we can actually test this on a... Well, it's not a test. It's not going to really be a test. Because as you can see, this Lumix camera doesn't have a pocket on the backside. And uh, this will just not... Although it will probably go into this hinge recess but it's got nothing on the opposite side to really sit against. So that, that's why it's uh, Sony specific and I, they have different, a different de design device that they sell, a different device that is like that that they sell that's meant to be used for different cameras, not just Sony. And I could probably test that one too on, on this camera, but this one doesn't really have a problem with overheating. And guys, I guess it just makes sense to show what this device is going to be sitting on permanently I guess somewhat permanently this is my uh, studio camera that I'm using for my studio purposes and that's uh, that's the one that uh, kind of has a bit of a, an overheating problem and as you can see this right here is uh, more or less nice nicely shaped wall it doesn't have any cutouts or anything like that so these rubber pads on this side are engaging a hundred percent both of them top one and down and the one on the bottom so I guess this will actually be a good installation I guess so this will grab onto the camera really well and that's that's where it will uh, be sitting like I said 10 times already I'm going to have this power bank right here and well that's how I'm running it I have a power bank on this side I also have a, if anything I have an extra battery on the top this power bank has a couple of uh, ports, so I can plug I, uh, uh, both of them, the camera and the fan into it, or or anything, I can just use this one on the top. So that's uh, pretty much uh, enough power to supply to, uh, to both of those devices, to the camera itself and to the cooler. So that's in general how this will run, and uh, so I'm not going to really worry that this doesn't have a built-in battery, so it will just it will just run. So guys, I guess this is it for this video. Thanks for visiting my channel. Don't forget to subscribe or like, dislike this video. I hope you picked up some useful information out of the bunch of words that I said in this video. And, uh, and I hope I will see you soon.